Hi, my name's Emily and I've got a company called Blaze and we do products for urban cyclists. Um, we're launching with the Blaze Bike Light, which tackles the biggest cause of cyclist fatality, which is being caught in the blind spot or vehicles turning across an unseen bike. Um, it's a bike light, first and foremost, but it also projects the symbol of a bike just in front of you onto the road. So it alerts drivers ahead of you that you're coming through and prevents them turning across your path. Um, it's a very simple idea, but we launched on Kickstarter just before Christmas. We wanted to raise £25,000 in a month, um, and we did that in less than five days. We went on to raise £55,000. So we're manufacturing this summer, and we're going to be in shops in September. I was studying product design at university, um, and it was my final year project. I'd never been on a road bike three years ago, but I decided to cycle the length of the UK for charity. So got on a bike, trained for four months, got the biking bug really badly, and um, started my final year with the theme, urban cycling. So looking at the challenges that city cyclists face. And safety is by far the biggest that I identified. Um, and then looked at the statistics, and it's the fact that 79% of bikes are hit when they're going straight ahead and a vehicle turns into them. So that was the problem. I identified the problem really clearly from the start, and I think that's something really important that you've got to actually find the need and find the problem first and foremost and then look for a solution rather than solution then problem. Um, and it's literally then a case of cycling around town and thinking that bus can't see me. If I was there, he could see me. I shall project myself there. Um, so it was my final year product design project and then uni sent out a press release and because um, I got sent on a scholarship to America and within a couple of days, it's on every cycling blog in the UK and in the Sydney Morning Herald by the end of the week. So I kind of thought, hey, this is something people are talking about, this is something pretty cool, let's, let's launch it. I wanted to do art and design at A-level. All I wanted to do was art and design. I loved art and design, but I, I could do maths and science. I was very good at maths and science. So my school very much encouraged me to do maths and science and told me I could do my art in the spare time um, and focus on the academic subjects. So I ended up doing physics, maths and chemistry and further maths for A-level. Then wanted to do something creative at university, but I didn't have a portfolio, I had no art to support that, so I couldn't, I was told I couldn't. Um, so I ended up reading physics, and I went to Oxford, I applied to six universities, five to read astrophysics, and one to read physics, because Oxford don't do astrophysics. And, and went, um, and got the exams, and, and did that, but um, I left to go and do design, which is what I originally wanted to be doing. And then spent four years doing product design, which I loved. Um, and it's an interesting path. I mean, I'm great, really grateful in a way that I went to Oxford and I did do the academic route. And I kind of, I ticked that box and I know I, I could, you know, I tried it. But um, I'm very grateful that I'm now doing what I love to be doing. And I think you just got to follow what you really love doing. Whatever you really love doing is what will get you out of bed in the morning, will get you, you know, your brain ticking and your excitement and, and you've got to pursue that. Um, fitting what other people think you should be doing probably won't work out for the best. So the future is really scary, we've got an awful lot to do. Um, this summer we're manufacturing, we're growing the team, we're rebranding, we're rebuilding the website, we're setting up our logistics, our e-coms, our distribution, there's a lot to do um, and lots of things will go wrong, it's really hard to know what at this moment. Manufacturing, um, we've got to keep on that, we've got to make sure that everything's working in China and I think all our logistics here and we're assembling in the UK, testing in the UK, um, something there will go wrong at some point, it's inevitable, but we've got to just minimise the risk. My thinking on all of this is, is I don't know any of this. I'm, I'm not an expert in, in manufacturing or launching a physical product or starting a company or branding or websites or any of the stuff that I'm now doing, but you put yourself in a position to learn and there's always somebody who lo knows who is an expert who can go and ask for a coffee. Um, and I've spent the last year and a half of literally just going and asking experts for advice anywhere I can and learning. There's so much to learn and in this position it's so exciting because you ha you're forced to. You're forced to be an expert in everything overnight. Um, which is really, it's an amazing, amazing thing to be doing. Um, but yeah, go and ask for people, people who know more than you because there's going to be lots of them. Go and ask for their help.